Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Vaseem Khan, an instructor of Total Quality Management course. In today's lecture, we will talk about uh, one of the most important topic, and that topic is the seven basic tools of quality. In this lecture, we will talk about improving the system, the PDCA or uh, plain do, check and act cycle, and we will talk about the Ishikawa seven basic tools of quality. An inventor of the quality tool, Koro Ishikawa says, when we introduce a particular method of doing a job, it is natural to consider whether the method is appropriate or not. The decision is usually based on past results and experience, or perhaps on conventional methods. Procedures will be most effective if a proper evaluation is made and on the job data are essential for making a proper evaluation. The uh, objective of the system is to be, to be successful. An organization must balance the needs of its different functional areas around a coherent business vision and strategy. The objective of the system is actually to satisfy the customer. And the purpose of this lecture is to introduce the basic uh, seven uh, tools of quality. A quality system model that you can see on the screen, focus on the customer and include the dynamic of continual improvement, change, planning, and renewal. Continual improvement is necessary for a company to learn to grow. Companies that are un unable to adopt find themselves with uh, stagnant cultures and labor forces. Many managers on discovering that their organization has reached this point believe they must resort to draconian measures uh, such as layoffs and organizational re-engineering to achieve change. If they had pursued continual improvement and learning in the first place, they might not have reached this juncture. The quality system uh, is not just a series of variables and relationships. It is an interconnected, interdisciplinary network of people, uh, technology, procedures, markets, customers, facilities, legal requirements, reporting requirements, and assets that interact to achieve an end. The most important aspect of the system is the people. People are the engine of creativity and innovation. Technology is very good at performing uh, ro road tasks. Uh, however, technology in and off itself cannot innovate. Therefore, how we manage people uh, may be the most important key in this system to unlock an organization's potential. One of the gurus, uh, Edwards Deming, was always uh, adamant that we should continually and uh, forever improve the system of production. And the system includes people. Let's talk about the PDCA cycle. PDCA cycle is an iterative four-step management method, which is used in business for the control and continuous improvement of processes and products. It is also called Deming cycle, Shivart cycle, control cycle, or PDSA, that is plan, do, study, and act cycle. So there are basic four phases in this particular cycle. The first one is the plan cycle. Uh, the first one is the plan phase, sorry. In the plan phase, we identify problems that is to be solved. 
gathering data, doing data analysis, and developing recommendations. The next phase is the do phase. As the name suggests, in this phase, we actually implement the solution on a trial basis. The third one is the PEC phase. It consists of a post-implementation study to ascertain whether or not the implementation resulted in the expected outcome. And the last one, and the most important one, is the ACT. This involves either adjusting the original implementation because of the problems resulting from the change or making the changes permanent if the implementation was affecting in making improvements. Now let's move toward the basic seven tools of quality. We call it the B7 tools as well. The seven basic uh, tools are simple to use in continuous improvement efforts. The tools often are used by individuals and teams uh, are useful at all uh, levels of organization and can be applied by people of different educational levels. As you learn and apply the tools of quality, you too will appreciate their wide application and usefulness. The basic seven tools of quality may be used in logical order. And that logical order is presented to you on the screen. You can see in figure 10.2, the logical order for B7 tools. Note that this is only a typical order of use for these tools. They can be used in almost any order. Okay, so the flow chart uh, gives the team the big picture of the process to be improved. Process data are uh, collected using a check sheets. The data are, uh, you know, uh, analyzed uh, using um, either histogram, uh, scatter plots, or uh, control charts. And for problem identification, we can use the cause and effect diagrams. And for prioritization, we can use the Pareto analysis. So. Uh, seven basic tools or the Ishikawa seven basic tools of quality are flow charts. Flow charts are also called process maps. Flow charts are also called process maps. Scatter diagrams, cause and effect diagrams, Pareto charts, histograms, check sheets, and control charts. Let's talk about the flow chart first. As I said, flow charts are also called the process maps. Flow chart is a picture of a process. The first step in many process improvement project is to create a map of the process as it exists. This useful step also determines the parameters for process improvement. The concept is that we must know the process before we can improve it. So the language of the process maps can vary from the simple to the complex. A simple set of symbols are provided that you can see on the screen. So these are the basic flow charting symbols, or we call it the basic process map symbols. You can see the single, the uh, rectangular uh, symbol for processing. 
this rectangular uh, uh, symbol for a start or stop, this circle for page, for flow line, we use arrow, for input and output, we use parallelograms, and for decision, we use this particular uh, symbol. There are some rules for flow charting. We will discuss these rules one by one. The first one is chart the process from the beginning with all arcs in the flow chart leaving and entering a symbol. The arcs represents the progression from one step to the next step. So this rules mean that the arrow or the arc will leave one step and will enter towards another step. Develop a general process flow chart and then fill it out by adding more detail about each of the elements. The third one is step through the process by interviewing those who perform it as they do their work. Then determine which steps add value and which don't in an effort to simplify the work. is in the second step we have discussed that we have to fill the, uh, the, the those symbols or those that particular flow chart with more details and in this step that is the fourth step we will have to identify that which step add value and which steps uh, uh, um, do not have um, an impact on the particular process so we have to omit or remove the, those steps that do not add value to the flow chart. Before simplifying works, determine whether the work really needs to be done in the first place. Let's discuss example of a flow chart. The flow chart on the next two slides demonstrate the evaluation of a simple process used in the planning department of the city of Boise, Idaho to issue permits allowing applicants to take possession of newly built homes. We will discuss the figure 10.4 that shows the process as it existed. In another figure 10.5, the process was simplified as the front desk was given more authority and training to process the forms without assigning them for analyst review. It was found that the analyst review did not add value for the organization or the customer. Therefore, it was eliminated. So this is the first and the more detailed flow chart. It is the process flow chart that contain a very detailed process. We have to start the process, then move to the uh, customer submit application. So the customer will submit applications. And when, if it is completed, if it is not completed, then we will have to go again to toward the start. And if it is completed, then we will move forward towards login by the department specialists. From, depart, uh, from the department specialist, we will move toward the, direct, the deputy director assigns, and then to the analyst reviews. After reviewing by the analyst, we will have to visit the site and do some research. And then we will have to action based on that particular research and analyst review. If it is yes, then we will have sent the action letter. And when it is no, then we will have to appeal and go back uh, to the start. Or we can have another option, and that is to withdraw our um, withdraw by the applicant. Now let's move toward the most simple and uh, valuable 
a flow uh, a valuable flow chart this is the flow chart which is much simpler than the previous one so the authority is actually given to the front desk for decision here the review uh, analyst review etc are uh, eliminated in this particular flow chart because those reviews do not add value to the process So let's discuss the steps in flow charting that uh, the flow charts include. Settle on a standard set for a flow chart symbols to be used. So we have to use the flow chart symbols, the standard symbols that we have discussed in the previous uh, slides. Clearly communicate the purpose of flow charting to all the individuals that are involved in the flow charting exercise observe the work being performed by shadowing the per workers performing the work and develop a flow chart of the process that's not an end we have to move towards the next step and that step is to review the flow chart with employees to make needed changes and adjustments to the flow chart The next tool of quality is check sheet. Check sheets are data gathering tools that can be used in forming histograms. They can be either tabular or schematic. How to set up a check sheet? So to answer this, we have to discuss the following points. The first one is to identify common defects occurring in the process. Then we will have to draw a table with common defects in the left column and time period across the top of the column to track the defects. The user of the check sheet then places check marks on the sheet whenever the defect is encountered. This is a sample of the check sheet you can see we have uh, on the left column we have uh, presented the problem types like setup routines not standardized or missing equipment for setup failure to separate internal or external tasks extensive machine resetting and paper change and some other problems and at, at the top of the table we have the days the five working actually days and if we can uh, whenever a particular problem occurs for example if the setup routines not standardized if this problem occurs on monday then we have to mark uh, a tick mark or tick here okay and similar for the other days now let's discuss the histograms histogram is actually a bar chart format and it is used for the representation of data there are different rules for developing a histogram the first one is the width of the histogram bars must be consistent that is, class widths are the same where each bar contains a single class. So this point means that the width of the histogram bars must be consistent, must be uniform. Each bar will represent a particular class, but the width of this class would be same. The classes must be mutually exclusive and all inclusive for number of classes or categories in a histogram we can use a rule of thumb here that is 2 raised to the power k greater than or equal to n 
we are in is the number of raw data values and k is the number of classes or categories for solving k we can take the log and k would be equal greater than or equal to log of n divided by log of 2 so using this formula we can find these values this is an example of the histogram of the number of maintenance occurrences and service hours for four, four production lines the production lines are press production line elbow production lines pipe and top line the light gray represent the occurrences like maintenance occurrences while the dark gray represent the service hours so you can see the width of each bar chart is same the width of this bar is same to the width of this bar similarly the width of this bar dark gray color bar is same to the width of this particular bar but these categories are actually different and these bar represent different frequencies now let's move toward the scatter diagram the scatter diagram or scatter plot is used to examine the relationships between variables these relationships are sometimes used to identify indicator variables in organizations so there are some steps in setting up a scatter plot the first and the most important step is to determine the independent and dependent variables the independent variables are usually plotted on x axis and the dependent variables are usually plotted on y axis the second step is to gather the process data relating to the variables identified in step one we have to identify the data regarding the independent and dependent variables the third step is plot the data on a two-dimensional cartesian plan and the last one uh, sorry the fourth one is to observe the plotted data to see whether there is a relationship between the variables so you can see this uh, um, uh, particular uh, scatter diagram these dots or these uh, small circle represent data the x this is the these are actually the independent variables uh, sorry these are the dependent variables that is prevention and appraisal costs are actually dependent uh, uh, variables and, uh, and plotted on the uh, y axis and conformance is plotted along the x axis okay control charts are used to uh, determine whether a process will produce a product or service within with consistent measurable properties so we are not going to discuss the control charts here we will discuss it in the coming lectures inshallah one of the most interesting diagrams or charts is the cause and effect diagrams cause and effect diagram is also called the fishbone diagram or ishikawa ishikawa diagram this diagram is designed to help workers focus on the cause of the problem rather than the symptoms please note it is very important that a di uh, di uh, that a uh, cause and effect diagram designed to uh, help workers 
have focused on the causes of a problem rather than the symptoms. Why we call it the fishbone diagram? Because it looks like the skeleton of a fish with the problem being the head of the fish and major causes being the ribs of the fish and sub-causes forming the smaller bones of the ribs. There are some steps that are required for creating a cause and effect diagram. The first step is to state the problem clearly in the head of the fish. So we have to state the problem in the head of the fish. The second is to draw the backbone and ribs. Ask the participants in the brainstorming session to identify the major causes of problem labeled in the head of the diagram. If participants have trouble, identify, uh, trouble, have trouble identifying pro major problem categories, it may be helpful to use materials, machines, people, and methods as possible bones. The third step is to continue to fill out the fishbone diagram, asking why about each problem or cause of a problem until the fish is filled out. So we have to ask the question why um, uh, um, while filling out the uh, fishbone diagram. Usually it takes no more than five levels of questioning to get to root causes. Hence, that's why we call it five whys. Weave the diagram and identify core causes and set goals to address the core causes. This is a sample and an example of the cause and effect diagram. Wobbling saw blade is actually the main problem here. So the main problem is the wobbling uh, saw blade. So this main problem, uh, we will state this main problem uh, in the head of the fish. This is the head of the fish. And the problem is the straw blade wobbles. So there, uh, this is okay. This is actually uh, the, the backbone of the fish, and these are the ribs of the fish. You can see. So the uh, ribs represent the major problems, like material, people, problems related to people problems regarding the methods and problems regarding machines. And the, the um, problems related to a major um, um, problem like material will, can be divided into different um, bones like wet wood, wrong size washers, axle hole, wrong size, etc. So you can um, draw this particular diagram for any problem uh, in your routine life. This will help you to identify the root causes of a particular problem. Okay, another one and the, one of the most important is Pareto charts. Pareto chart is used to identify and prioritize problems to be solved. So the basic, the, the main function of this Pareto chart is to identify and prioritize problems that, that are to be solved. Histograms aided by the 80-20 rule adopted by the Joseph Duran from Wilfredo Pareto. The 80-20 rule states that roughly 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the causes. This means that there are a vital few causes that create most of the problems. That means that 80% problems are actually created by 20% causes. There are some rules and steps uh, for uh, Pareto analysis. Uh, first, we are going to discuss the rules for constructing the Pareto charts. 
Information must be selected based on types or classifications of defects that occur as a result of a process. Data must be collected and classified into categories. And a histogram or frequency chart is constructed showing the number of occurrences. The steps that can be used in Pareto analysis are gathering categorical data related to, uh, to quality problems, drawing a histogram of the data, and focusing on the tallest bar in the histogram first when solving the problem. So this is a particular Pareto analysis. The, X, X, the Y axis uh, represent the frequency and the X axis represent uh, different problems. For more videos, please follow my YouTube and Facebook, page, YouTube channel and Facebook page. Learn with Vasim. Thank you.